Welcome one and all to BBZ versus Skill Based, our third game of the day here in the Luna League. I'm joined by my friend Richard and my jungler war leader. Um, yeah, uh, we barely dodged out on a, on a potential miss on this game, but luckily we've been brought here by FOF and by Jaffe um, to, to watch this one and see this one come together. Um, and see this draft come together immediately. Shen ban. That's the yeah. fearful ban. That's the fearful ban, the Nocturne too. <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna take away the Shen and the Nocturne from skill base. I think these are two just really good bands. They have a lot of global presence, and they're just kind of hard to deal with because the way they can shut down uh, plays from across the map. Meanwhile, skill base is taking away some junglers. They're very scared of Dax's ability to control the jungle, so they're gonna take away a real power pick in Zin Zhao, as well as one of the best control picks right now. Got buffed recently, gonna take away Dudu and Willow. Yeah, and uh, Zashan losing the vein. Jarvan going down now. That is three bans onto Dax. I think we've seen Dax, Dax in this league, um, both this year, or, or this season and previous seasons, just be incredibly effective on junglers that can get the get stuff done early. Uh, it's where Dax seems to feel comfortable. And uh, comfort pick for Teth as well, going onto that Ezreal. Just trying to make sure that botling gets neutralized. Mundo is a really interesting response from skill base. So it's not a champion that we see very much but it's definitely one that can be really strong, and it's going to be oh, another super tank in the Ramus. Big boys making big noise early for skill-based. And there's nowhere else that that Mundo could be going. Yeah, no, so I'm almost certain that that has to be top jungle just completely written off. That's going to be safe, or that's going to be weak side. Uh, probably not going to be ganking up there. And the Irelia locked in for Jaffe. Welcome back. Uh, here comes the power pick in the top lane. I imagine that's going to be Morgana support in. Picking Leona into that from skill base is going to be interesting, but yeah, Irelia, Jaffe, that was quite the show last time. Yeah, we saw Jaffe really do quite a bit on that Irelia pick. There is a chance that it gets fluxed over to red, but I would imagine that this is going to be very much a Jaffe pick. Skill base picking up the Leona is another very CC oriented tank champion. Skill base is going to need to find some very heavy, heavy damage champions for Theracles and Zeeshan to play. Uh, BBZ is going to take away Galio, take away more of these this global presence that they don't want to play into. Skill base oh, is going yeah. to continue targeting Dax's champion pool. Diego and Zach both pretty solid junglers right now. We'll have to see what Dax can play. So I actually really like the Ramus spec, especially if they're targeting Dax, because Dax loves to play Ramus. It's yeah. actually like the champion he's most comfortable on. So really there have been six jungle takeaways from Dax. Yeah. Seven, if you count the Nocturne that BBC mm -hmm. banned themselves. Uh, so we'll have to see what... Oh yeah, that's mid, that's mid lane mid. Kogma! No, no, mid lane Kogma on the oh, other side from Kogma. BBC! So it that makes it as real. No, certainly not, no. And then potentially move with jungle, but Kogma, okay. I'm very excited. I absolutely love mid lane Kogma. So obviously Kogma just got buff last, last patch, got an extra 20% ratio on that E. Um, and just it's so much extra damage from that Kogma. I really want to see Red play that. Oh, I'm actually really excited for this game now. We see the Amumu locked in uh, on the side of BBZ and then the Caitlyn pick up in the bot lane. Um, so obviously going for a little bit of lane dominance on the side of skill base there with that Caitlyn, but oh, I'm so excited to see this Kogma get played. <laughs> I'm a little worried about what skill based comp wants to do. They have some really solid engaged champions and they kind of have two artillery sort of characters that want to stay really far away and just poke and fire paw shots. Um, so it'll be really interesting. I think BBC's comp is a little more centered on what it wants to do. So I, I think they're going to pick this one up. What about you? I, I, I absolutely have to vote for the Kogma here. Um, honestly, I, 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 I will get into it during the game because we don't have enough time at this card set second, but it's so... It, it, it's such a special pick for me. Um, I'm, I was really interested that they didn't actually, they saw the initial three bands on the side of BBZ and then we're just like, okay, we're gonna leave Dax, we're gonna let him take away these bands, make sure that they, you know, they're gonna throw these bands at other people, make sure they go, um, they, they just go centered onto Dax. Dax is going to be very comfortable picking up that Amumu. Um, obviously has been buffed. Uh, I'm pretty sure between both leagues, we've almost exclusively seen Amumu in the support role where there might've been one game in there where he played jungle, but I can't remember who did it. Um, but it's gonna be, uh, I'm looking forward to see what Dax is able to do on that. Obviously, Amumu can cause pressure in the early game. Um, and then on the other side, obviously, I mean, we talked about Jaffe and whatnot, but on the other side, it's skill base. They have these three massive tanks sitting in front of the, some genuinely long range damage threats. Obviously, Caitlyn is going to have that stunted point in the mid game where she's not doing as much. She does hit her stride again in the later stages of the game, um, not anywhere near 
uh, you know, like a Jinx level or something like that, but she is still strong in that late stage of the game. Um, and Xerath obviously is just going to build up power as the game goes. They have a lot of wave clear. They have a lot of room to hold until those later stages of the game. It's going to be how to skill based effectively keep that Irelia off, keep that Amumu off, and stop these damage threats that BBZ has just stacked um, from doing too much damage uh, and, and uh, uh, destroying those two threats on the side of skill based. Um, yeah. There is a little bit of a delay before the end of this draft, um, but we are just about ready to go into game uh, and see how these compositions play out. Awesome. Ready to get onto the Rift. VBZ versus skill based. I'm very excited. You are right. Red is piloting the Kogma mid, going to start off with a tier as both teams are fanning out. Doesn't look like anything too fancy is going to happen at this, uh, this level one. And so. Uh, Hextech Amumu, which I've never seen before, but I, I I am going to be raving about this Kogma for the entire game. I'm probably the only person who enjoys watching the uh, the artillery fest that is that champion just dealing damage uh, from insanely far away. But there, there's some special place in my heart for that champion. Um, and I I, oh, I I can't get the emotions out. They're too excited now. BBZ <laughs> is going to walk up and try and get this word down um, and try and get some early vision, get some early vision control on where that Ramus is going to be and see if maybe Dax wants to go for some invades. But now Orphic landing the binding onto Zishan has used Q, so we know there's going to be no net to get out of there. A lot of damage onto Zishan, actually. Um, and Orphic and Tef are just going to have to back off. Now that is, most importantly, their mana flow and uh, spell thieves. So that is actually the smallest of leads for BBZ. Yeah, I mean, so VBC get like a hundred ish gold. I, I mean, I, I think the mana flow isn't that insignificant, and I believe uh, both Taff and Orphic probably both benefiting from hitting those spells. Uh, Orphic gets some gold from it, they both get mana from it. Um, also, it means that Zishan actually has to go all the way back to base. So BBZ have complete control of this bot lane early, and Zishan might have a delayed level spike. And, and I've just come to notice that Zishan has actually opted for the Dark Harvest on this Caitlyn, which is a bit of an interesting choice. Um, it, it, normally, you'd expect Fleet Footwork. Of course, that recently got buffed, so that can be a really strong option. Jaffe just going in in that top lane. But um, you could also see Lethal Tempo. Uh, sometimes a good option to let Caitlyn scale into this later game, which I think she needs to do. Uh, and she probably wants to... Um, uh, opt for some some fast hitting uh, and, and just actually be able to pump up some damage in the later stages of the game. But the Dark Harvest means that this is almost certainly going for uh, like poke damage, and they're trying to build a composition where they can just harass and have these chunky frontliners in front. Um, and I, I'm interested to see how skill base plays that because that's not a composition that uh, you just come across in solo queue. This is something that they have to have readied. Uh, not ready for that binding though. Zishan gonna take a lot of damage to re-engage from Kevin. A lot of damage onto Orphic actually. Orphic gets very low, and there's the first kill over to the side of skill based. There's the ignite, there's that aggression coming out from that Caitlyn Leona lane. Well, Dark Harvest is a pretty good route if your opponents are low. And speaking Jaffy. of low opponents, Jaffy. Jaffy with absolute early game dominance up in this top lane showing how dominant this Aurelia pick can be. Wow. Very exciting early game from both teams. We, we saw some early success from Kevin engaging in the bottom lane. Zishan does have a lot of early damage on that Caitlyn, and it's something that BBZ didn't seem to respect. Talking about respect, though, you have to respect Jaffe's ability to pilot this champion in the Aurelia. A level 3 tower dive to kill a Dr. Mundo is not something that you see every day. Yeah, no, and I think the last time that we did see this, if memory serves, was against Tass, um, and that was into Kennen. Obviously, range matchup, very nice for Irelia. She's normally quite comfortable with that. She can get on top of those range laners, no problem. Um, and, and this time, playing into a big tank, and uh, Jaffe almost looks more comfortable in this situation. Comfort, though. Bot lane, feeling a bit too comfy, walking up a bit forward. I don't know if they caught that Ramus that Ward is here not in place to actually catch it. So here comes the Ramus going in onto Orphic. Orphic does block with the Black Shield, but now is on top of so much CC and a great flash out to avoid the trap and the Caitlyn Q. Does manage, does manage to keep his life, but not his flash. Yeah, so really good gank early by one lucky fridge. So far, the bot lane's looking really good on the side of skill based, and this is something that's going to need to go well to get them into the game. Uh, you have the Xerath going to be con putting out pretty consistent artillery damage throughout the mid game, but Caitlyn is a champion that has a very big power trough in the mid game. So getting ahead in the early game is going to be really important to mitigate that. 
Especially getting that Caitlyn specifically ahead because she can mitigate that duration where she's at that two items, at that two, roughly, you know, two, three items where she's really not at her strongest. She does really well at the zero to one item range. And then, like you said, have that power trough. And then once she gets those abilities maxed out, she has a lot of extra damage. Speaking of damage, this Kog'Maw just laying down those E's. And that is, a, that, is a, that is a build and a champion that is going to take so much time to build up in its maximum strength. Kog'Ma has very good AP ratios, has very good missing health damage on the ulti, but it takes a little while for him to get to the point where he can sustain that damage. He needs the XP on the for the ulti, he needs the AP for all of his other abilities, and and we will see big damage and big numbers coming out of the Kog'Maw, but it's going to be around 2-300 CS when he actually starts to do that, but Jaffy's not waiting for that kind of duration right now. Yeah, we're going to see Dax go in here. A big engage from Dax, actually just catching Kevin, does burn the flash, another re-engage with the second charge of that bandage toss onto Zeeshan, but Warfit gets very low, barely survives the heal burn from Zeeshan, getting very, very low as Kevin gets the re-engage onto Tep. Tep doesn't have enough mana to finish either of these off, and what a great escape from this gank by the side of skill-based, actually managing to walk away from that. I think Kevin played that absolutely perfectly. Zeeshan is on, I don't know, 30 HP, and Kevin does a great job of making sure that his Leona is always in between the enemies and his Caitlyn. And as a result, Zeeshan gets out on the slimmest of margins very well played. Yeah, and, and I mean, obviously, this is going to be gold over to the side of BBC. That is a positive play for them. They've gotten a lot of sums off in that bot lane, and it's going to leave Dax to walk down again, get some vision control set up, and then come down again and maybe get that kill. Um, so it's it's not going to be easy sailing for the next five or so minutes on the side of skill base, but the fact that they get to walk away with that, they don't have to give over any gold, um, and they just take their recalls, they could get to go home by that Serena Dirk. Really, honestly, very well done. I was certain there was going to be a kill there. Yeah. I, so even though we've seen things go back and forth between these two teams, I think it's really important to note about 600 gold lead. Uh, well, actually, it changed right as I said that. Now it's only a 300 gold lead for BBZ off of the oh. laning prowess of Jaffe. But now here comes Ramus again, forcing out a flash. I actually, man, it actually decides to turn away right there. Doesn't think he's going to be able to catch up to Red in time for that TP to finish. Jaffe comes into the lane, just protecting his Kogma there. And we've seen protect the Kogma Composition's bot lane for a few years now. And now we're starting to see a mid lane. Uh, we see Dax trying to take advantage of those burnt summoners in the bot lane. The vision is completely set up for BBZ, and there's a blind eye here as they finally catch wind of the mummy coming into the jungle. But here comes Ramus to try and make this even, but no. 4v3 in the favor of BBZ. Tep gets taken incredibly low, does manage to pick up the kill. Is Zeeshan. Dax walking away on almost no HP, but does get picked up by the Xerath ulti. That is 2, 4, 1 in favor of skill based. Yeah, I think Skillbase played that fight really well. Theracles walking down knows the Kogma won't be able to stop the Xerath roam and able to get in that Arcane Barrage to finish off the kill. Uh, I, th I think that Skillbase played that fight incredibly well. I was a little worried about it seemed like the Caitlyn was getting left out to dry a little bit, but it didn't matter because they were able... The, the thick front line between one Lucky Fridge and Kevin was able to soak up so much of BBZ's damage. And like we said, this Kog'Maw takes a little more time to scale, only on a Fiendish Codex. Not even sure if Red had that for the fight. So not putting out too much damage. And even though it looks like a 4v3 for BBZ, Theracles is just an artillery barrage away from being in the fight. Yeah, no, I, I think that um, there's been some big improvements already that we've seen from skill base because obviously that was the proactive play for BBZ there. We were saying that they don't have the sums in that bot lane. They don't have the, the ability to maybe get away from this gank a second time. But no, there was the reaction immediately from skill base, but now Lucky Fridge not able to react to the Amuma being here. The skill's going to get gifted over to the Kog'Maw. And we might see in the top, the fight in the top lane now, Jaffe getting immediately onto Rochelle and just... No, continuing this fight, Jaffe never stops getting under, getting the, the Mundo under turret. I'm just going to hold him there, take the CS, maybe take a couple of tower shops and bait in that gank a little bit more. But yeah, uh, yeah no, good good kill to give over to Red there. That Kogma, obviously, when it does scale up, is going to be able to chunk entire teams. You can put a front line in front of him. It does not matter. He's going to be building into that Leandris for the sake of that tank shredding. I imagine that we'll see um, some more tank shred in the uh, bot lane coming out of that Ezreal. Um, going for that Divine Sunder, get some percent health damage, and uh, we're going to see the Rift Herald taken on this top side. Yeah, I think One Lucky Fridge gets just really not un caught, not understanding uh, the way the pressure on the map works. So because... Can Jaffe get there? Can Jaffe actually get over the wall right now? I think, I Jaffe's, caught, I think Jaffe's caught trying to not show... Oh, there we go. Over to the thin <laughs> side. Well done. Well done. 
<laughs> Gents, I'm very proud of you. Um, but yeah, no, I think, yeah, like, like the fridge, just not respecting the Mumu's turning up, doesn't respect the lack of mid prior that Derekles is missing at the moment. Um, and yeah, just gets caught out, and that's a free kill over to the Kogma. And, you know, that's a worrying place for that gold to be going right now. Oh, for sure, Kogma is the quintessential late game threat. And even though it's a different style in the mid lane, still going to be something to be worried about for sure as this game moves on. Yeah, Meanwhile, it looks like skill base is going to start up the dragon. We're going to have to see if BBZ wants to do anything about this. Doesn't look like they're in position to really do anything about it. Red taking a lot of damage on the top side, and they're just using the spot prior to get that first dragon. Now, we are confirming that this is going to be one of the one of the situational souls, as it were. There's two souls, in my opinion, in this game that can really fit onto any team composition, and those two are not up for grabs today. So what we have is we have Cloud and we have Mountain. Um, I think that this Mountain Soul, if the if the dragons can continue on the side of skill base right now, if they can pick up a Mountain Soul, this team is going to be so scary and so hard to break if they can get the extra tank stats out of that, get the shield, protect from that Kog'Maw poke. But of course, that is a long way away right now. So far, it's just that Infernal Dragon, more more damage onto their carries. Oh, and that just massive Kog'Maw damage. The barrage. I think both of these teams actually benefit really greatly from Mountain Soul because both teams have a strategy revolved around getting off a lot of poke damage. So honestly, if either team got that, it would be a huge boon to them in how these sort of neutral situations play out and where the damage ends up landing. Uh, I think if this is a Cloud Soul, however, I think it's a pretty major advantage over to the side of BBZ. Um, I think Orphic with the Morgana does a lot. Ooh, little scrap in the mid lane, but nothing's going to come of it. Uh, I think uh, Morgana benefits so much from having the Cloud Soul, and Red is able to proc Cloud Soul quite consistently. Jaffe's going to appreciate the move speed to close down on key targets. So I, I think if it's uh, if it is a Cloud Soul, it is very good for BBZ. I think if it's a Mountain Soul, both teams would be really excited to have it. Kevin had actually, I believe that's Kevin's ward, it might, might have been uh, Theros, but uh, it threaded a really nice ward in there to make sure that they can confirm that dragon just on the side of the raptors there. Um, outside of the range, the pink ward actually really well placed, but I say that, here comes the engage in the top lane with a really well placed ultimate uh, on from Jaffe. A lot of damage coming down, but no, here comes the Mundo regen. Da Jaffe, you've gotten yourself too deep. Is he going to be able to side sweep that cleaver? No, it was a little bit earlier, maybe it was waited for, but now Dax trying to come up here and run down the doctor. And he's got most of his health back. I don't know if Dax is actually going to be able to win this. Does miss the second bandage toss. The ultimate is available. Does get the, the initial damage down from the E. There's the ultimate popped out. And what am I saying? Here comes a lot of damage from this Amumu. And immediately goes down in the trade kill. No assist picked up for Jaffe. No TP available. And one for one. Yeah, uh, Jaffe really just underestimated the amount of minions that were in Roy Shao's wave. And as a result, even though the Mundo's falling a little behind, has enough armor Ooh. for the minions to do the work. He shot incredibly low, but unfortunately Fridge isn't here yet to save the play. The Solar Flare does go down, but now it decides that they look like, it looks like they're deciding to disengage. But I don't think there's any way for this Leona to get out. A double kill over to Taff. Very well played from those two to try and catch that uh, Caitlyn. They had no idea that there was a gank on the way, but they just made the play happen even more proactively. Yeah, I mean, that that's a really rough moment in communications from the side of skill based. I, I, I can just imagine how those comms went down. Lucky Fridge is probably saying something. Okay, guys, I'm in the bush. I'm getting ready for a gank. Just let him push up a little bit. Zishan's like, oh, they got me. Uh, uh, what do I do? Yeah, <laughs> and unfortunately, clear comms drowned out by screaming there, I believe. <laughs> oh, hold on. Heracles is actually in a lot of trouble here. But no, I say that, and Red is actually the one who turns out to be in trouble as a trade kill goes down, but that is the shutdown onto one lucky fridge, a six assist picked up by Theracles. And honestly, that's not too bad of a trade for them. Flash oh, burned on the Kogma. Yeah, I mean, uh, I believe it was a shutdown that goes over to one lucky fridge's Ramus going to go a pretty long way in terms of gold. But <laughs> speaking of gold, up on the top side, uh, Dax picking up the Rift Herald, putting all that gold on to Jaffe. Off the turret plates, and this really is going to be terrifying. Yeah, four plates, obviously, huge amount. I don't think they're going to be getting that fifth one, unfortunately. They are zoned off just before they go down, but getting that Rift Herald down just before the plates uh, lose their value. And a lot of lost value there, but maybe they'll find that gold somewhere else as they find Fridge in his jungle. Now the second Bandage Toss does manage to catch. Now here's the artillery in from the Xerath to try and support this fight. Now Rochelle has to try and defend and go back to this turret, which we just saw get chunked out. A little bit risky now. Teth alone on their own in this bot lane. Is Orphic getting some very deep wards actually in favor of that? Oh yeah, no, fight down top lane. Yeah, I mean... 
This has been a pretty chaotic game so far. A lot of kills going down by two teams that kind of want to scale up. Big binding. And now Kevin's trying to find a re-engage onto this fight, but I don't think that there's going to be any way for Kevin to make this happen. A great CZ chain there from Orphic from the ulti, and then almost picked up there from Red in the mid lane. It looks like these individual lanes are just starting to fall away from skill base, getting caught. Um, just a couple of times there, they weren't ready for Orphic to come back to lane. Uh, and even though uh, Tef under turret, which is normally a time when teams actually really struggle to get deep vision down, Orphic is finding it, coming back to lane and picking up a kill into Zeeshan. Yeah, I, I think I think Theracles is very used to, when playing Xerath, having a range advantage into his opponent. And Kog'Maw is not a matchup you see every day, and the, the barrage that... Uh, Kogma can put out definitely has a lot of range to it, so Theracles gonna have to learn how to deal with that on the fly as this game goes on. BBZ is going to walk over to pick up this it ocean track, and it is a mountain soul. So, like I said earlier, both teams have a very poke-oriented composition. I think anyone that gets the soul is very happy to have it. I, I'm honestly really glad it's a mountain soul. I think it makes the game a lot more interesting than if it's yep. a cloud soul. Um, so so that's really exciting. And wow. Red doesn't have flash. Red does not have flash, but he's able to completely zone off Theracles by himself there. The taunt does actually connect with the Q there, and there's the chain CC. Red is going to go down 2 1 Lucky Fridge a second time, and now Thero is just going to have to run away from the Akathian surprise. Get back onto that minion wave and get some damage now. Now, Z Sean, though they've, there's been some struggles in this bot lane. Um, they're just getting caught out by the Morgana Bindings, there's been those big fights in the bot lane. They started off really strong, but it seems like they've continued that. That turret, very, very low, and at risk of being the first tower to drop, I think it's going to be. So that is a good chunk of gold going to skill-based. Yeah, and it's really good, too. I mean, we've talked about how um, Caitlyn has a power trough in the mid-game. is really at her strongest at one item and at four or five items. And the fact that... Zeeshan has already died three times before even getting to one item is a bit of a problem. So hopefully that tower gold plus additional CS is going to get him. I mean, it's, it feels weird to say it's good to get him into his power trough, but but that actually is the case because the faster you get into the trough, uh, you know, the faster you get out. So uh, hopefully that gold goes a long way there. And now I was calling that there might be some uh, some uh, tank shred coming out of this bot lane for uh, Tef, but they have opted to go for what I believe is going to end up being a Triforce, unless this is some weird wits end build that I haven't seen before, um, which is uh, curious to me because ooh, Tef is almost certainly just going to be hitting frontline in this game. Um, so I'm interested to see why they've gone with the Triforce and if they're going to try and play around it differently. Now Dax actually getting caught out with Lucky Fridge and Zeeshan. Zeeshan unfortunately does miss that first trap and now gets the engage onto two. Jappy with the ult over the wall. The flash burn from Zeeshan is not going to get anything done. Here comes the re-engage from BBZ in this 3v2. Jappy dealing so much damage to Kevin now. And a TP now coming out from uh, Royshal does actually get the kill onto Dax. But now trying to pick the 1v3 under his barely surviving tower. Red decides to walk up. Is it going to quite take the turret yet? Yes, now there goes down that turret. And that's a turret back for BBZ. A flash forward from Orphic does catch Theracles. Uh, way too far forward, and that's the kill over to Jappy. And now Jappy sees the opportunity to engage onto that Mundo under turret. What a chaotic, broken up fight we've had in this top lane. Oh yeah, I, I and this this fight all turns off of Zeeshan missing a Poro Snacks trap. With that, Caitlyn not able to lock down Dax, and Dax is able to get on top of Zeeshan and Lucky Fridge. Oh, but there's a fight breaking out again in the top lane. I think Jaffy's going to actually be able to walk out of that one thanks to that Black Shield, and now Lucky Fridge is going to get caught by that Kogma ulti. There's that long-range artillery on that post-level 11 Kogma. The ultimate feels so powerful past that point because you're hitting people further than your screen can see. Um, Next level's Fog of War, so hopefully they're enjoying that one. But now Zeeshan finding the trade on to Tef. This is actually very positive for Caitlyn at this point in the game. Does he have the, the net available? Yes, the flash burn, but that Q will get the kill. That is an 850 gold shutdown onto that Caitlyn at a very crucial time in the game. Yeah, that's going to be really important if skill base want to claw their way back. They're looking at about a 7,000 gold lead in front of them, even after the shutdown. So hopefully the money onto the Caitlyn, it's where you want it. So skill base should hopefully be able to use that money to make the Caitlyn stronger. A very good catch by Zeeshaw to get it done. Notably, that is two sums burnt from uh, the from the carry position there uh, on Ezreal from Tef. 
Um, so that is going to be, you know, obviously, if any of these carries are going to burn flash, it's going to be Ezreal. It's going to be okay. Ezreal does have that arcane shift. He's going to be fine. Um, but, you know, you know they, it, those types of situations come up more often. And obviously, Z, uh, Zishan didn't have to burn anything to, to find that. Just able to get that engage all on his own, get those two summoners, and, you know, going forward to a dragon that's in 50 seconds, maybe that's the difference. It could be. So, so far, we've seen so much action in this game. Uh, we've seen Red's Kogma doing so much work. We've seen Jaffe being an absolute monster on this Aurelia. It's really hard, I think, if you're on the side of skill base for these big tanks. Which resists do you itemize into? Obviously, Ramus is incentivized to build armor, but it seems like it's so difficult to deal with the damage mixture. Oh, Banish Toss! Shots into the flash there. Dax immediately locking down that first kill for Red, and there goes Zishan as the dragon coming up in only 10 seconds. Rift Herald goes down. They're not going to pull that second turret, but I think they're going to be able to pull up an even bigger objective, grabbing that first Mountain Drake. Yeah, and like we said, it's going to be really important. Oh! Okay, I thought they were going to get something off of Morgana's Binding. Orvik has been on top of these all game. Maybe they'll just find something off of absolutely nothing. Red trying to get a big engage there. Lucky Fridge unable to hit that ult. Or, yeah, I believe that was his ultimate going down, not grabbing any CC from it. And I think they might even just ignore this dragon and start to push forward. Jappy so deep into the base right now, does get taunted up into the chain CC, now gets stunned. But there's so much damage from this Irelia immediately picking up the kill on a Theracles. And is he going to be able to take this 1v4? No, does go down to Zishan. Unable to get any further damage. Orphic does catch the Caitlyn ulti in the Dark Harvest. Barely does not finish it off. What a scrappy game that Jaffe has found for us on this Irelia. Yeah, I mean, having an Irelia player on my team, I know how it goes. You press Q once, you gotta press it again. You keep pressing the Q key and wait. I'm behind the enemy team's inhibitor? Doesn't matter though. Jaffe manages to pick up more than enough kills to call that worth. But this game is has been exciting and scrappy. Uh, BBZ moves down, picks up the Mountain Drake, gets the reset, and they're going to get back out on the map to continue terrorizing skill base. I think to a degree calling this game scrappy has been a little bit in the disfavor of these two teams. They've actually made a lot of good um, macro decisions so far. And obviously there has been some really disjointed fights. I think the team fighting specifically has been the scrappy part of it. But of course, that's a big attention grabber. I think these guys have actually done a really good job of um, getting on top of the turrets, especially on the side of BBZ. They've made sure they've, they've broken a lot of these outer turrets, obviously five of the six outer turrets down. Um, and, and they're getting a lot of gold from it. They're getting a lot of map pressure. Uh, they did manage to pull that dragon. Uh, and it... it, it uh, it's saying the game is exclusively scrappy does kind of undermine that. And I don't think that's totally fair. These guys have done a very good job, but these fights have been so broken up so far, and it's hard to say where that's uh, centered from, where that's coming from. But I, I'd be interested to see if we do get some organized team fights, some front to backs, whatever these guys want to go for, some more poke heavy, let the Jaffe engage, whatever it might be. Do you see the Zareth ulti going down? It's a little bit interesting. Um, I don't know if Theracles is just trying to clear enemy raptors or something like that. I'm not sure what the goal is there, but oh, I guess Tef was very low. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm interested to see if these guys can get some organized team fights where we do have this Mundo and this Ramus standing in front of the, uh, you know, standing down the, the onslaught from BBZ, which I feel like might happen soon if this Baron is available. TP is available for both of these top laners as it does drop down to 4k HP. Dax trying to get the flash engage, does get the ultimate down onto Theracles, who's now caught in the middle. Solar Flare does go down as BBZ backs up into a choke, but Red is the one taking advantage of that choke. Kevin in the middle, it's all up to Zishan now to try and take down Orphic, and to take down Red, and to take down Tef, and so far the damage actually has been pumping out, I'm kind of underselling him at the moment, does manage to pick up the kill on Orphic, but isn't going to be able to turn it any further, and I think Jaffe might have lost out in the bot lane. Yeah, uh, it, that was, look, I know you're saying not to call it scrappy, so I'll call it disjointed. These very disjointed oh, oh, oh. team fights have been favoring BBZ. Uh, Zishan is able to put so much damage out on the Caitlyn, unfortunately, even though BBZ backs up into a choke point, it is a choke point in which skill base does not have vision in. It makes it really hard for Zishan to actually continue firing out these auto attacks, might have been able to turn the play with the amount of gold that's been funneled into this Caitlyn. Already at three items when most of the rest of Zishan's team is looking at maybe one and a half, so... Uh, it's going to be up to this Caitlyn to drag this game back. In fact, looking at 
uh, even BBZ's items, Zishan has more finished items than anyone does Ooh. on the side of BBC. Ar Arcane Barrage coming out from Theracles. A few, couple of those are going to chunk red pretty low, but ultimately he's going to be fine. Black Shield coming out. And I think that previous fight comes down a lot to uh, Theracles getting caught. Uh, the, the Morgana binding, getting the damage down there, and I was worried about that that choke point. Now, obviously, choke point can play to either of these teams. There's a lot of AoE, but when your Xerath isn't there, when your Solar Flare's already been used, that choke point isn't that valuable anymore, and, and it almost felt like skill base was getting baited back there. You're dealing with a Kog'Maw, that E, so much damage in that choke point, that ulti, so much damage. The Ezreal can pump out damage with the ulti in that choke point. A Moo uh, and Irelia, but, you know, obviously, Irelia was bot lane, but that, that choke lane is so, or the, the choke point is so valuable for um for both teams in that scenario but all the cooldowns had already been gone they're missing their Xerath uh and so it skill base just kind of walked into a lost fight right yeah I, I'd be interested to see how that fight went on the bot side where Roy Shell actually managed to get a kill on Jaffe's Aurelia and have to man have to imagine that the Aurelia went too deep under a tower one lucky fridge looking for Dax does actually find that catch onto Dax, and now the re-engage over the wall into Zeeshawn doesn't know that Kevin's already there. So much damage does go back into Tef's ultimate, and now we see Lucky Fridge going down low and see how much damage is rolling out of this Ezreal. All across the keyboard and all across the rift. So much damage from Tef, and all of a sudden that Triforce is making a little bit more sense. Oh yeah, I mean that's just a beautifully aimed skill shot from the side of Tef. They played it so well. Caught Zeeshan immediately. All the damage on the side of skill base goes down instantly. So now BBC is just going to uh, collect the spoils of that big fight victory. It's going to be two inhibitors, probably a second mountain break, maybe even a Baron if they're feeling a little feisty. Yeah, no, I don't think they're going to be able to close this one just yet. They do have a massive gold lead, obviously, clawing into the 12k range. Um, they do have the... Uh, they do have the whole team up. That, that fight ended up going four for zero, which is so big. Um, and it really is starting to look very desperate from skill base now. They had a very strong early game, especially from what we've seen from this team. They are clearly growing and they are starting to get better. It's just that the, the mistakes are magnified when you're playing against a team like BBC, a team that has been so strong um, it, now and in past. Uh, and I think it, it, it is kind of unfortunate to see skill base fall by the wayside through one of their better performances i feel but bbc not to be discounted everyone on their team is playing so well um the, the vision control has been there for orphic uh in the early and mid games it hasn't really been missing those bindings tef is doing so much damage jaffe so much damage red so much damage dax undying at this point uh and it, it is starting to look desperate for skill base yeah absolutely uh they they haven't really been able to find the sort of dream fight that they're looking for with the Dr. Mundo and the Ramus on the front, the artillery firing out from the back. No one can get to them. That's just that that is just a dream and not reality as uh, Jaffe and Dax have been able to split up the dream front to back fight and BBZ are going to actually start up the bear and we'll see what skill base does about it. Now this has been split 4-1. Jaffe is on the bot side. I think mainly right now skill base has to look for this steal. I don't know how they're going to find it. We're going to see the incoming with the Xerath ultimate. Isn't going to pick it up. There's this. There's the secure from Dax. Now we see Lucky Fridge over the wall. Zishan trying to provide some damage, but I don't know that they've realized that Jaffe is behind them. It doesn't look like they need it. The double kill from the Kog'Ma ultimate. That is going to be a cleanup there from the side of BBZ. Jaffe is going to finally pick up Theracles after after catching up to him, and it is just Roy Shao left to try and hold this team. Baron empowered, five versus one, two super waves coming in. Let's see it, Mundo. Yeah, I mean, this poor Dr. Mundo has been on the opposite side of the action for most of the game, and now finally getting some action with five Baron empowered, very strong members of BBZ going to walk up to the Nexus, hit it a few times, flash for style, and BBZ takes this game versus skill base. Yeah, wow, that, that snowballed out of control pretty quickly, didn't it? I think uh, BBZ did a, a phenomenal job of like actually trying to maintain uh, you know, the, the, the lead that they managed to develop. Now, obviously, they did start that game a little bit behind. It was a little bit back and forth, but holy cow, there's the Kog'Ma damage. <laughs> wow, Kog'Ma does a lot more damage <laughs> than I expected. I mean, I definitely knew Red was getting a lot done, but wow, that is about double the damage of Jaffe, who was very flashy. Red's damage. Wow. What a beautiful champion there. And I think, honestly, I, I have to restate it. Skill-based played better today. 
this is a Absolutely. stronger performance from them. We have seen them there. Obviously, they're at the bottom of the leaderboard right now. They, they're past the midway point of the season now. This is their halfway point. They're ready to turn stuff around now, and it looks like they're making strides. Playoffs, you know, still a distant reach, but sixth place might be available for, for them. Getting into that playoff draft, that's probably what they got to aim for right now is just taking every game, taking them one at a time, trying to take it seriously. Um, and on the side of BBC, what a performance. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the silver lining for skill base sort of has always been Zishan, but I think an additional silver lining they can take out of this game is that they made multiple macro plays that actually worked, especially in the early game. I, I was really happy to see that from them, and uh, I, I think it looked really good, especially in the early game. Um, Hopefully, they've got some work to do to get up to the level of a really good team like BBC, who's been dominating Luna, um, but I'm excited. Looks good. Yeah, hopefully we can see a little bit more growth from skill base. But for right now, we're going to be going off to an interview with the side of BBZ. Don't go anywhere.
Hello, folks, and welcome back. I am your friendly neighborhood shoutcaster Shargon, and I have joining me today BBZ's Red. Um, so the the mid laner on the Kogma. How you doing, Red? That was a pretty strong performance out there. I'm doing good. It was a pretty fun game. Uh, we mm -hmm. got to pull out something that wasn't like Meta Slave. Yeah, I, I am going to get to that here in just a moment. And that actually kind of leads into my first question, uh, funny enough, is what was your expectation going into this draft and then uh, against SKL? And what kind of expectations did you have for them going in? Uh, so we pretty much expected them to do kind of a single carry complex like they've been doing. Um, we kind of had a completely different draft plan prepped for this game and then they kind of just picked three really tanky tanks in the first three picks and we were like okay we gotta we gotta adjust mm -hmm. um, so we made the changes and it worked out right and then it's like you saw that Zerath pick come out and then I have a feeling that you were kind of expecting it right uh, I was no I wasn't expecting the Zerath pick but I have played a ton of AP Kogma over the years and uh I've always enjoyed playing it into other like uh, artillery mages like Zareth. And so when they picked it, I was basically begging my team to let me to let me pick it, even though I'm the one doing the draft. I was like, guys, guys, we got to do this. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy. That so you, you, that. You, you pulled the what about Vayne top? Let's play Vayne top. Kind yeah, of thing, yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, OK, so it obviously you, you had a pretty strong performance in your mid lane. You did pretty, pretty good over there. But um, I, I have to ask you, what was going on down down in the bot lane? Man, I don't even know. Like, my bot lane's playing Ezreal Morgan. It's probably like the safest bot lane in existence. Level two happens. All here is, oh, I'm dead. I was just like, oh, well, this is a great start to the game. <laughs> You're just like, okay, this this is exactly how we expected things to go. Yeah, All right. exactly. Well, then, uh, talking about how you expect things to go, tomorrow you are playing against Yubi. Um, yep. And for, for those who watched the lounge, you, you said you, you were like, oh, wait, that is this week. I thought it was next yes. week. <laughs> I did think it was next week. Yeah. So uh, what kind of prep have you done since then in order to get ready for that game? Absolutely zero prep. We're doing it right after this. <laughs> All right. Oh, I thought you were just going to do it live, like just not even do any prep up to the actual game and just be like, you know what? We're good. We're, we got oh, this. I'm not I'm not that carefree. I'm not mm -hmm. INT. Not INT. But you, you guys, I'm guessing, have got a pretty good idea of what you're uh, expecting, what you're going to be planning going into that. Uh, Yeah, we have a few ideas that we've been tossing around in our Discord, and we're going to kind of focus in on what we want to do. All right. Well, Red, thank you so much for that. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a quick break. I want to say thank you for dropping by, though. Thank you for having me. You are very welcome. All right, folks, so stick around. We'll be right back with one more game for the day. So don't go away. Thank <laughs> you. 